I really believe this is the beginning of a sort of new wave of exploration in the outer solar system. We've got to figure out how we go there more often than every 20 or 30 years, right? We've got to figure out how we go there faster. This is Star Talk, Cosmic Queries Edition. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. And I got Chuck Nice with me, Chuck, my co-host. What's happening, Neil? How are you? How you doing, man? So today we're going to talk about the Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Oh, my gosh. JPL? JPL, one of the more storied places on Earth. It's been around even since before NASA, yet it is a branch of NASA. And what brings it, uh, gives it special attention today, is that it has a new director. Ooh. And I don't mean to brag, but like I'm personal friends with the new director. Ooh. When you think of that, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we introduce <laughs> Lori Leshen. Lori, welcome to Star Talk. Thank you, Neil and Chuck. It's so great to be with you. Yeah, you, you're like spanking brand new in that position. Just a few months. You know, this is like a, we're starting out the new year, 2023. Yes, happy but new year. You, you haven't been in there more than six months or so, right? So, just about six months. That's right. Yeah. Just wow. Well, congratulations. Uh, and, How's it going so far? Good. It's uh, every day is an adventure. It's, uh, you know, we have weeks where it's like Mars on Tuesday and Earth on Friday and it's uh, an astrophysics in between. So we've got all kinds of really exciting things. What, so uh, Chuck, you didn't ask the right on. question. It's, uh, Lori, what debacle did you inherit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> there's a little bit of that. A little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yeah, so... Uh, when I arrived, we were the first launch we were supposed to do is a mission called Psyche, which is a really cool mission. Which Psyche is the name of the asteroid, right? It yeah. is. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. name right. of the asteroid, right. and it's the name of the mission because right. that's how we roll. And uh, you know, kind of keep everybody on their toes. Wait, which one are you talking about? Mm -hmm. um, but talking about the mission, uh, turned out when I arrived about four weeks later, we realized we weren't quite ready to launch, and so mm. we were going to miss that launch Psy window. So. <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> well, yeah, so it's kind of the perfect mission for that, right? Like Lucy football, Lucy meet football. There you go. Um, That's funny, yeah. Right? And unfortunately, now, wait, now this is yeah. super interesting, though, because you're going to a metal asteroid, which so we all know there's so many implications kind of wrapped in that. And yeah. what are you guys going to do? Is it just going? Is it what are you doing? It's going to orbit. It's going to go into orbit around this metal asteroid and really map it. We have never visited a metal world, right? We've visited rocky worlds, Mars, Earth, you know, other planets. We have visited icy worlds with the moons of Jupiter and Saturn and the outer planets, um, you know, so-called, you know, icy worlds or ocean worlds, which we should talk more about. Um, but we've never visited a metal world. That's because there actually aren't that many of Lori, them. That's we... where Iron Man comes from. Well, <laughs> it is also I, where know, Iron I, Maiden comes from. Oh, there, the group. On. Oh, there, there. Okay. There. Yeah, that may or may not be in our level one requirements. I don't <laughs> really know. Yeah. Uh, so but Lori, we are going. So we're going to go later this year. We're going to we're okay. going to launch. It's not. In it's October not. Of it's not totally scratched. It's not a, a, no, a cancel. In fact, program. And you know, COVID had a lot to do with it. Honestly, like you can't you can't build spacecraft from your parents' basements. Like you gotta. You got to be, um, we got to be here and be together. And, and we missed some things and we needed to get that right. It's much, having been involved in missions that launched, that weren't ready to launch and that weren't successful as a result, it's much better to sort of call a timeout and say, let's do this right. And that's what we've done. So that when you're awesome. head, you can call timeout on adults, right? Yes. <laughs> when your parent you say to your kids, but your your director, timeout. Yeah, no, we're not putting them in a timeout. Oh, oh, oh that's we're in the, the football oh, sense sorry, of a timeout. Sorry, we're sorry. calling a we call the timeout to say we're not gonna launch if we're not ready. And uh let's go fix the issues, which were software issues, it turns out. Hardware's doing great. It's actually already in Florida waiting for it's gonna launch on a Falcon Heavy, which is gonna be really rocking. And Falcon is, is SpaceX. Just right. SpaceX, yeah. Falcon yeah. Heavy. So that's the one with three, like three Falcon 9 cores on it. Right. So wow. it's, it's a big kick out to out to Psyche. So, Lori, you're a geochemist. So are you a geologist that does chemistry or you're a chemist that does geology? How do What do we think of you as this these two professions stapled together in one time? Yes, that's exactly right. I actually studied chemistry as an undergraduate and then mm. sort of switched into geo science so i really do kind of sit at the middle 
and I care a lot about life in the universe, but because I come from a family of doctors, my big rebellion in life was I never took biology in college. So wow, mm, okay, yeah, that, right. that that was like my big, you know. Yeah, so, so I'm a rebel. What can how I say? did the space part of this become interesting to you? For me, it was I was a ten year old girl seeing the very first pictures from the surface of Mars from the Viking missions way back in the seventies. Wow. And I grew up in Arizona, and I think there was just something about that landscape that really spoke to me. I wanted to reach out and touch those rocks, and that has stayed has stayed with me all these years. And all these years later, I I get to we're working right now to bring rocks back from Mars. So, so not, Marie, not a very good uh, advertisement for Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I, 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 I disagree. I saw the surface of Mars and figured it's I got to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> I get to look at new pictures from Mars, and they nah. are and it awe-inspiring. Reminds you of home. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm going to end up probably after I retire in Sedona, which is about as Mars-like as you can get. So yeah, yeah I think it's just the thing for me. And what's your relationship nah. with the Mars Curiosity rover? I'm on the team. I've actually been on the Curiosity team since before it was even called Curiosity. It's uh, going all the way back to the initial formulation of the science goals. I'm involved in two of the instruments. I was here at JPL well before I worked for JPL. I was here when we landed on Mars. It was actually on my birthday in 2012. We landed on Mars with Curiosity. Mm, awesome mm -hmm, birthday mm -hmm. present. Most awesome birthday ever. And uh, yeah, I got to have gotten to work on the, our discoveries around water on the uh, in the in the soil and the rocks. Right. So mission still going. Ten years later, still going. Still going. And so, do you get to set? priorities for JPL or does that come from up on high because mm. you presumably report to the the administrator of NASA the, the head of NASA and the head of NASA I think reports to the vice president right or someone in the White House yeah so what so is the ch what's the chain of command there how much autonomy do they give you it's interesting actually I mean there's a that's a multifaceted question which I won't give you the the long answer but first of all we're unique among everyone knows about NASA centers right Houston we have a problem and we launch things from from uh Florida at Kennedy Space Center those are our government labs where all the employees are, are government employees. We are actually a different kind of a flavor of that. We actually all work for Caltech. We're a federally funded research and development center. FFRDC, um, so yeah. And FFRDC, we are the only um, NASA center that is such. So, so we have a bit of a dual reporting relationship. We we get to sort of I think our close connection with Caltech, a, a storied university, has great for our our sort of innovation culture. Wait, Lori, who and signs your paycheck? That's who we want to, is it Caltech they or They do, NASA? Caltech does. Oh, there oh, it Caltech is, does. all right. But, but all of the money that funds us flows through NASA. Okay. So okay. that's, uh, I, I have you. multiple bosses, yeah, shall we say. Okay. Right. So, okay. but, but, so it's really important that we um, align our priorities with, with NASA's and, and also that the inventions that we're investing in and making help drive NASA's priorities, right? It's a bit of a two-way street. Oh, yeah. So we get to see kind of what's up and coming, where's the science going, and share that with the science community, share it with NASA, and that helps drive what missions NASA ends up doing, right? So it's, it's two-way. And so you also are duly appointed. It's not just that Caltech signs your check. You're actually affiliated with one of the departments there. That's right. I'm, I'm a vice president at Caltech, and I'm also a professor at Caltech. In my old PhD department, where I got my doctorate, I'm oh, a professor. Oh wow! And oh. They actually gave me an office on campus. It's my old grad student office. If you can believe that, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Actually, come, come back. Yeah. That's good. You get to, well, it's fun. You, you get to it's go fun. back to your old department and flex your muscles. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. awesome. I, unfortunately, this job takes a lot of time, so I <laughs> don't have a ton of time to spend on campus. But, um, but the connection to Caltech is super important to us. No, oh, excellent, excellent, and so. Uh, just before we get to our Q and A, is there, um, is there one or more, or what's your top goal for JPL in your in the tenure that you're about to? Yeah, I mean, bring? It, so it's a really uh, so much. Of it's about delivering on our our ex really exciting near term portfolio. We've got um, we just launched an Earth the latest Earth Science mission called SWAT, which is all about understanding Earth's water. We are working on- Oh, thank on... God. I know, right? What yeah. could be more important? Oh, yeah, yeah forget no, the name like I, SWAT. Thought, I thought you were going to take knows? us out. Right. No, SWAT, <laughs> surface water, ocean topography. Oh, not everything's oh, an acronym here. Not special weapons and tactics. Okay. Right. No. Okay. Surface right. water. And, and we're going to launch 
Psyche this year. We're going to launch a mission to Jupiter next year that's going to focus on its icy moon Europa, which nice. I love yeah, to we'll talk get more back about. to that. And we probably have questions on that too. But and keep then going. Mars sample return. Go to Mars. Come mm -hmm. back for the first time ever that Mars round trip. So mm -hmm. delivering on those missions is is, is uh, our highest priority. Get your so ass I to Mars. <laughs> Exactly. And come back. And, and come then back. get back. That's right. No one-way right. trip here. <laughs> so uh, echoing Kurt Vonnegut, Lori, is this one of these situations where you bring the sa sample back from Mars and the last sentence ever spoken oh, no. in the human species is, let's look inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shouldn't laugh. I'm not laughing about that. No, we're taking it very seriously. It's called, as you know, Neil, planetary protection is like a whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we're taking it really, really seriously. Yeah, They've already had some public hearings about, about it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so planetary protection, you got people looking over your shoulder to make sure what you bring back is properly sealed and contained. Exactly. And boy, you, you should see, I mean, uh, I actually happen to have here a model uh, holding up on the a video part, a model of one of the uh, the sample tubes. Each, each sample is about the size of your pinky. So there are little rock cores about the size of your pinky. And they're so sealed in tubes, which are then sealed in, they are drilled out, sealed yeah. inside things that's sealed inside that and sealed inside something else. I mean, like it's, okay. there's a lot of seals. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm going to keep it safe. A little nesting no, 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 doll I, of a sample. Wait, wait, no, here it is. So it's, it has seven seals. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm resisting making seal. And, no, 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 no. And then she opened the seventh seal. And then <laughs> right. Exactly. And you ushered yeah. in the entire apocalypse. There you go. <laughs> so, Chuck, you got questions for, for my friend here. Indeed, we do. do. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we do. Uh, I guess we'll just. And these are from our, from our uh, Patreon supporters. Yes, they nice. are. Nice. Very cool for people who support yeah, you. Yeah, that yeah, yeah exactly. Should support yeah. you. Something, uh, something nice in return for the people that support us. So, pop one in. We, we only have like a, like a minute left in this segment. Hello, Dr. Tyson, Lord Nice, Dr. Leshen. Does NASA have any plans for future missions to Europa? Jumping right into it. The fact that the cold, frigid world might have an ocean of water underneath is absolutely fascinating. What are the challenges of a manned or even a robotic exploration of Europa? And what concerns might we have for the potential of life in its waters? My man has all gone, he's going full sci-fi. He went all the way. He went all, <laughs> the, way. Time, he went all the way where, he was just like, okay, are we going? How are we gonna get there? Will it be us? Will it be robots? What about the fish? <laughs> and if not, yeah. So the guy's <laughs> all in, and that is a brilliant question, all encompassing, that we will get to when we return from this first break. Star Talk, Cosmic Queries with my good friend Lori Leshen, recently appointed as the director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratories, Pasadena, California. Stay tuned. We're back, Star Talk, Cosmic Queries, all about the Jet Propulsion Laboratories from the horse's mouth itself. Lori Leshen, recently Horse. appointed as director of those labs in Pasadena, California. And Lori, uh, I want, my life as an astrophysicist does not normally overlap the lives of geochemists, which is what you are. And we were just kind of sort of merged together now 20 years ago or so mm -hmm. uh, on a commission under then President George W. Bush to study the future of NASA. And yeah. we were assembled, we were sort of handpicked to bring all of the NASA portfolio together at one table. Right. And so you're bringing yeah. in the geology and I'm bringing in some astro. We had some other folks. We had an aeronautics person, one of the A's and NASA stands for mm -hmm. aeronautics. So uh, I greatly enjoyed our, our time together there and the collaboration that that represented. And 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 dare I say, I, when I <laughs> you were just a lowly academic at the time, but you were like totally in charge of every one of those meetings. And I said, damn, girl. You know, go on. And the next time I turn around, you're like president of the um, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and now yeah. he, now head of of the Jet Propulsion Labs. And I'm trying to think how many other titles are left. Head of NASA. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm head pretty of happy NASA. where I am. But you know, I mean, it's hard to believe it's been almost 20 years. Yeah, 20 Neil, years. And yeah, yeah. 
And that was a really transformative professional experience for me. And I give you all the credit for my future success after just, I mean, you were there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it was, it was such a great learning experience show. for me. You were already I on was Star the kid. Talk. You don't have to yeah. butter up the, the host. You can, you're <laughs> already a guest on the show. <laughs> it's all true. Uh, but it was I, my uh, second commission. That's true. I yes, was, you had done it. I was the kid. Yeah. I was the youngest of the nine commission members. And yeah. it, was a, it was a huge learning experience it for me. It was just clear it, that I said, this woman's going to be in charge of something one day. That was very yeah. clear. But you're right. Nice. We had a, we had a, uh, didn't we have a four star general, Air Force general? We and, did, General Lyles, yes. Yeah, General Lyles. Yes. And it, was, it was quite a pedigreed group. Incredible, yeah. uh, incredible leaders across mm -hmm. lots of parts of government, industry, academia. Yeah. And, uh, and it really showed me that by broadening my perspective on things, I had been an academic my whole life uh, mm -hmm. and I was feeling the ivory tower. And, yeah, and yeah. the idea of ditching my tenure and joining NASA, which I did soon after that. Mm -hmm. um, was really uh, came from from that work. Yeah, sometimes it, it, it's a calling, right? And it is. not literally a phone call, but <laughs> the universe beckons and you replied. So, yeah. Dex, we're glad to have you there. So, Thank you. Uh, we're getting back to the question that we dangled right in front of all three of us. Uh, what's the person's name again, Chuck? It's Jonathan Cull or Kuhl. K U H L. Kuhl, uh, so, okay. Cull right. or Kuhl. Cool. He's probably Jonathan Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I'll get the letter uh, on social media. Chuck, my name is Cool, as in Joe. <laughs> Joe Cool. So tell us about uh, Europa, because that question was all about yeah. uh, everyone's favorite moon of Jupiter. It mm -hmm. is so exciting. So literally right now, as I speak to you, the our, our first dedicated mission to Europa is sitting in our high bay in our big, giant, clean room here at JPL being put together, being assembled and tested. And it's called Europa Clipper. It's going to launch in October of 2024. So Just a, less a quick question. Is is that room, this room you're describing, is that, I've been in a room where an entire wall was HEPA filters. Filters, yes. Is that yes. what this wall is? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. keep it quite clean. And everybody in there is head to toe in bunny suits, as we call them, to make sure that you know, none of our schmutz gets on the spacecraft, right? No schmutzing. You don't want to discover the coronavirus on Europa. It's say, oh my gosh. Definitely yeah. not that. <laughs> no. And uh, then it's like I somebody, anybody's so, hair. Somebody sneezed bef right before yeah, the launch. right. Exactly. Yep. Um, and so we're in there putting that spacecraft together. It's going to go to Jupiter. It's actually going to go into orbit around Jupiter, but do multiple, a couple of dozen very close flybys to Europa. And with nine different sensors that are going to tell us about the ocean underneath the ice, about the thickness of the ice. So there's some places where maybe the ice gets really thin. If there's stuff spewing out from the surface, we're going to analyze that with a That would be through a crevasse, or, presumably, or some kind of fissure. Right, or some kind of crack, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, but so so again, how thick are we talking here? How thick? Um, many kilometers, probably even tens of kilometers thick in what? places. Wow. How do you want to is, see if there's water? That's the question, right? So if we can find some spots where the ice is thinner, that helps you with the follow-up mission, which should be a landed mission, right? Okay. We don't have that approved yet, but we've been working on the technology to make it possible to go land on a moon of Jupiter. <sighs> Mind-blowing. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. um, by the way, this is a solar-powered mission at Jupiter. You know, Neil, how much further from right. uh, the sun Jupiter is than right. the Earth, about five times further, right? right? So the solar panels are giant. They would stretch from the toe to the crown of the Statue of Liberty. Whoa. Those wow. are big. So it's the biggest Whoa. thing we've ever built. Wait, so Jupiter is five times farther away. So it's receiving one twenty fifth exactly right. of the sun's intensity. So right. if you're going to try to get the same power you would have hanging out at Mars, but at Jupiter, you're going to have to, your panels have to be twenty five times bigger. It's big. Pure and simple. Right. Wow. So it's a it's a per, it's a beast. It's a beast. And then the the spacecraft itself with nine different sensors, which of course the scientists want all nine to be running every time you fly by Europa. So it's quite complicated. And the um, radiation environment at Jupiter is really harsh and nasty, which is one reason why probably the surface of Europa is not a very habitable environment. But down in the ocean, you know, who knows? Could there be something swimming well, around? We're, we're it's shielded. Right. It's shielded. Yes, yeah, it's exactly. shielded. It's mm -hmm. nice and, you know, ocean. So I heard, you know, I've seen close-up photos of the surface of Europa where the, where the ice looks like it has cracked 
yes. and then refilled and, and then, then froze yep. again, right? So if yep. it had cracked, that means water from below seeps up. That's right. So to, to the surface and then freezes again. So could yep. you have like freeze dried fish right there in those cracks? You could. Mm. You could have freeze dried organic based something, organic fish. molecules. Just say it. Life. <laughs> right. Say it. Fish. Fish is pretty advanced. I'd be happy with algae, like cool algae underneath the ocean. And then Raise your expectations. Yeah. Oh, All right. At least crying serpents, least eels, whatever you want. <laughs> Loch Ness Monster. There you yes. go. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be totally cool. <laughs> so that seems to me that if you can't dig through kilometers of ice, you could at least scoop up something from one of the fissures. Exactly. And so even from orbit, we think there is some outgassing going on that we can we can look for organic molecules and try and understand what's happening there. And then with a lander, hopefully you can, again, dig into the surface and, and understand what's happening. So wow. I, I, I don't mean to brag, but I was in in um, I had a very brief cameo in a movie called The Europa Report. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So it was a movie. And what they did, they just asked my permission to uh, quote me from a media interview that I was in. So I didn't have to like perform for it. Uh, wow. and, and and they just got me saying, I want to go to Europa, dig through the dig through its surface and go ice fishing. Cut off. <laughs> That's oh, what nice. I said. Nice. And they, they like that. That's right? basically so, it. Yeah, I think I got like a it's a good quote for that. That was nice. That was like, yeah. I like that it's hard. That's gonna be a challenge to get through that ice for sure. So uh -huh. we're already working on technology to help us do that. Yeah, so that just so just uh, just to give a shout out to the film, it was like like an indie budget kind of film. And it was called it, the yeah. Europa Report because they go to Europa and the entire movie are just mission cameras positioned in the cockpit and on the exterior of the vessel and on the helmets of the crew. So every next scene, it says camera three or camera seven. And so that was like sort of the, the what you had to buy into the fact that the this was a report yeah. given to Congress to the sum of this mission. So it's an interesting um, premise. So, so yeah, people. But yeah, when science fiction is all up in your in your situation, you know you're onto a, a, an interesting subject. It is, and it's a one of, of of what we think now are many what we would call ocean worlds in the outer solar system. Back when you and I were growing up in science, Neil, that we were not thinking about habitable environments that far from the sun, right? Or right. certainly and not on is, moons. Moons were yeah. like, who cares about moons? That's right. the planets themselves. No, so it's yep. a whole, and whole other world, literally. So it's, it's the beginning. I, I really believe this is the beginning of a, a sort of new wave of exploration in the outer solar system. We've got to figure out how we go there more often than every 20 or 30 years, right? We've got to figure out how we go there faster. I'm a little older than you, to put it in context, when I was, when we were first going out to the solar system, everything was a flyby. Yeah. Right? No one went into orbit around the planets. So we did these tours of the Voyager was well, Voyager one, two, Pioneer ten and eleven. Still going. We're all just flybys. <laughs> so you you had to like get your camera ready, you know, right? I just whiz <laughs> <There> by. <it goes. laughs> <laughs> so Chuck, give me some more more questions. Have all a, right, a let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's go with Fernando uh, Colon, who says this. Uh, Doctor Lesson, greetings from San Diego. My question is simple. Now, with the achievement of fusion ignition uh, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Ooh. will fusion energy play a role in space travel? And if so, how long will it take until it becomes viable as a main energy source for rockets? I love mm -hmm. it. I love uh, yeah, it. Let's get this done. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's what he's saying. Like, so so it, that's a great question. I mean, it's so con huge congratulations to the, the NIF team up, up at Livermore. That, mm -hmm. that is a huge achievement. And it's like step one, yeah. step zero point one on the mm -hmm. road to doing yeah. what um, what is being asked about because they've got a long way to go to try and get that scale. Uh, but but you got to start somewhere, and and they've been working towards this milestone for years. So congrats to them. In space, we now use fission energy. We do use nuclear energy, but it's it's of a different kind, right? We use radioactive. Uh, um, things like plutonium that actually produce energy when they split apart into other atoms. So that is today available to us. And we, in fact, use it extensively. Our Mars rovers use it. We use it out beyond Jupiter. You really can't do solar power. So we, we've used it on missions like Cassini and Saturn. Mm -hmm. but, but, and wait, the... but you're getting that energy a little bit for free because the, the plutonium naturally decays. Correct. So you just send the plutonium and, right. the, and, the, and the blob of it gets hot. 
and then you the thing, tap the it hard for part its about that is just concentrating the plutonium, right? Yeah, yeah, you that's right. Separate that's right. it out and get it ready. But you don't need but, to, those are not sitting in a nuclear reactor. They're just their right. own thing. It's just, so yeah. it's kind of like free that's to free. Right. So now, right. but with a fusion, it seems like you gotta you gotta get that to happen. On your own. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a while. Is yeah, the okay. is the honest answer to the question? <laughs> yeah, nobody quite knows how to scale beyond the little tiny bit that they were able to do yet. Yeah. but but you got to start somewhere, and uh, and the sun knows how to do it. So you know, yeah, sun never had yeah. any trouble making That's that it. happen. Well, yeah. <laughs> so Chuck, time for another one. Keep going. Here we go. This is Alan of Wales. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And Lovely. so Alan says, uh, Doctor Tyson, Doctor Lesson. And Chuck, uh, it is amazing to see the Space Launch System successfully orbit the Orion capsule and to see it safely return to Earth. But really, what grounds does NASA have to continue to build expandable launch systems? Agreed, massive profits, no doubt, made supplying this one-time throwaway equipment. But does NASA have any plans to build reusable systems like commercial companies have already successfully mm. deployed? Mm. Ooh. Well, well, Lori said she's not using a NASA vessel. She's they That's right. launched on a Falcon. A, yes. Yeah. Right. How, how much of the Falcon Heavy is reusable? So it depends on what you're launching. So um, in some cases, they actually will fly um, like two of the boosters back. Uh, mm -hmm. They've done that with heavies. In some cases, you want to take every last bit of fuel out of that reusable rocket. And so you actually use it in an expendable mode. So that's an option for us as well. Okay. Um, so you well, know, just to be clear, if, in case people don't realize, if you're going to bring the boosters back, yeah, right. you're going to leave some fuel. You launched them with fuel yeah. that did not participate in continuing to send your payload to its Correct. destination. So so you're using up weight in yes. order to bring the thing back. So there's quite the interesting economic trade-off there right. between the reusability yeah. and the cost of your mission. But I think... Um... You know, I think Artemis is, was a huge success, and it's just great to see that launch. I mean, in some ways, that program saw its origin from the from the work that Neil and I did together oh, on yeah. the commission back in the day, right? It was a commission that on was the future. all about what's going to come after the shuttle. On the future of the U.S. Um, uh, space, space exploration program. Exploration yeah. program. Right. Mm. So we're proud to see that flying. Right, right. Nice little humble brag happening no, here. No, stop, stop. Mm. Dang right. Okay. Take a little credit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Chuck, Chuck, slip in another question before we go to break. All right, here we go. Uh, this is Adam Akra, who says this. Hello, Dr. Laurie, Neil, and Mr. Nice. I've always been fascinated by the thought of going to another planet. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is feasible in our lifetimes. Well, Adam, we don't know how old you are, but uh, <laughs> yeah, if he's 89, you better yes. say, the answer is he no. Says, he oh. says, at least, at the minimum, to see another human being make it to Mars. And uh, for your reference, I'm 50 years old. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Oh, there good. You go. Uh, okay. Wait, that's so, what, so, Laurie, that's what I the whole thing. J JPL is completely um, robotic. Robotic. Right. So. You could you could say we're already on Mars. We plunked we are, down an SUV and, and... size rover. But um, so, do we need people on Mars? Are you? Where do you what do you, what do you do with people? And and do we do the people learn anything from all of your efforts and orbital trajectories and 100%. orbital inserts? To uh, how much shared uh, insights are is there between those? Yeah, two hundred percent. I mean, if you look at the history of JPL, I mean, there's a lot of ways to answer this. But one of the our very first you know, forays into deep space was on missions like Ranger and Surveyor, which paved the way for astronauts to go to the moon 50 years ago, yes, right? Yes, of course, yes. And so yes. we, and today that the, that way well, Just for those who don't paved. know, those two missions photographed in high detail the surface of the moon. Correct. So that we could judge what might be the best place to land. We had no idea. No what, idea. What no, like. Not only the, the safest ones, place. We just tried to crash it in. We missed a bunch of times, by the way. <laughs> as we were oh, I didn't know to, that. Like, we literally like, know. whoops, missed the moon. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> and, and, Whoa. and... <laughs> Plus, it's there's, there's, the, you there's a lot land, of good stories around here. <laughs> you want to land safely. Plus, you want to land where there's some interesting geology, right? Otherwise, That's right. What, what's the point, right? But we didn't even know, you know, where the lander's going to sink into the lunar dust. Like, right. there was all kinds of stuff with basic stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and our rovers on Mars are, are, and landers are paving the way today 
um, for human exploration and Mars sample return, which is actually going to be the first mission to make the round trip to Mars is a mm -hmm. big one in, you know, actually launching something from the surface of Mars that comes back to earth. Right. So, right, right. so we're absolutely paving the way. I'm optimistic that, uh, in, was it Adam? I'm sorry. Adam's yes. lifetime. That's right. That, uh, that we will see people on Mars. And, and I'm bullish on what they can do. As a geologist, if we look at what one of our rovers does in a day, and they've actually done some tests around this, a human could do that in a minute or two, right? Kind of right. go somewhere, look mm -hmm. around a bit, try to figure it's, it's And how it's fast do the rovers rove? Oh, you know, Curiosity goes about as fast as a human can walk. Okay. So it's reasonable, but not very fast. Um, right. Perseverance, who's there now, is, is, is a bit... Um, zippier so can go a, a little bit faster it's still going to be slow on like it's not race car time right, right. so <laughs> yeah rover just, races that's how you know we're it, in the future it also it's, depends yeah. it also depends what kind of human you're comparing it to right. <laughs> oh. <That's true. laughs> so i i'm hopeful laurie we've got to take a break but when we come back we'll continue and we might even go into a lightning round uh, cosmic queries on star talk with the freshly minted director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratories, Lori Leshen. We'll be right back. We're back. Star Talk, Cosmic Queries, Neil deGrasse Tyson here. We've got the newly minted head director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratories, a branch of NASA, which is a, also, in a way, a branch of the California Institute of Technology, Caltech in Pasadena, California, ensuring that it has an unending uh, access to academic excellence. Brilliance, yeah. That, that uh, Caltech only knows uh, is academic excellence. So, so Lori, is, um, do they let you uh, jump onto social media all by yourself or do you have to vet what you post? Because if people want to follow what you do, how do they do that? I am at Lori of Mars on Twitter. Wait, 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 wait. Lori what? Lori of Mars. Lori of Mars? That is my Twitter oh, handle. Oh, I love it. Okay, yeah. Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E of yes, Mars. Yes, of it. Mars. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm still on Twitter. I'm like, hopeful. <laughs> you, didn't get, you didn't get bumped off. Okay, yes. No, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and then there's a ton of JPL social media, too, on almost every platform you can imagine. And so what's we JPL's are, handle? Uh, at NASA JPL. NASA JPL, okay. Yeah. All right. Very and good. And then there's all lots of our missions are tweeting, uh, you know, uh, actually, Mars Insight is a good example. We just came to the end of mission of Mars Insight recently, and it put out kind of a last tweet. My power's getting low. I mean, I'm, honestly, so it's, I it's, get a little it, teary eyed. It speaks in the first person. In it the first does. Person. Yeah, it okay. does. Oh. So, tweet of exploring Mars. Our our uh, our rovers are tweeting. There you uh -huh. go. Mark Watney, we're coming for you. <laughs> yes, that's right. Hang on. Man. Yeah. Always hard to see one come to an end, even yeah. though it lasted far outlasted its uh, its mission. It's, its expiration date, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Chuck, let's maybe we can do a lightning round this segment. So, sure. Lori, you just have to answer quickly, okay? And right. shut me up if I interrupt, <laughs> okay? So, Chuck, go. Good. All right, our friend Kevin the Sommelier says, mm -hmm. Congratulations, Dr. Lashen, on your directorship. Having a background in geochemistry, I'm sure the asteroids and comets are of great interest to you. How likely is it to capture one and harness its resources within the next 25 years? And to celebrate your new role, I would recommend a bottle of Laurent Perrier Rosé. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> well, thank you for the recommendation. Yeah. Um, Laurent Perrier, Laurent. it's a sparkling wine. And it's a so, sparkling rosé. Yeah, it's a spark. And so the, the, oh, I love that. It's, it would be rosé because it's made from the Pinot Noir grape. But yes, not without, left too long in contact with the skin. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what's I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the Brut Rosé. Oh, nice! You, so. Oh, look at that! Thank well, you there, for he, the uh, recommendation. He's a great pair. He's a great sommelier. He, 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 he knew this without even meeting you. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> fantastic. He, perfect. Come, I could use a personal sommelier. No, I'm uh, actually uh, married uh, to one. <laughs> so uh, that's good. Hey, um. Asteroid. So, you know, capturing... yeah, when are we going to get rich off of asteroids? Well, that's the question. Oh, look, I think um, near Earth asteroids, exploring them for resources and learning to live more off the land out in space is really important to keep pursuing. It's um, it's a huge challenge. 25 years is probably about the right kind of time frame to be thinking about. OK. And how about comets? Is there any value to the water that's on them? Boy, am I, you know, we, we don't know enough about the surface of comets yet, but mm -hmm. but um, probably 
probably somewhat less valuable would be my initial relative um, to take. the to the uh, to the metals and, and minerals other yeah. things okay. on. Okay, but we got unless so much more to learn. Unless you're thirsty in space, then um... always want some water. That's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or just bring some brute rosé. Yeah. What would you... <laughs> Or you do what they do on the space station, just recycle your pee. Okay. Well, you I think we'll be doing that. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a whole different kind of rosé. That's a different question. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Chuck, keep it coming. All right, great. this is good, good uh, answer there, Lori. Nice uh, uh, Thank you. Our friend Y. Koss says this with quite an attitude, I might admit. Oh. Uh, from the Russian Luna and 2-3 missions in 1959, which landed and crashed and orbited the moon, and the manned Apollo program in the 60s, uh, to the Chinese... Uh, uh, Chang'e 5, uh, capstone orbiter, and the Korean, uh, Dernori orbiter. Mm -hmm. There have been many, many moon missions. What makes the Artemis program so particularly interesting? Ooh. Oh. oh. Well, I think the goal of Artemis, and, and again, JPL is, doesn't have a huge role there, although we're involved on, um, we did all the communications with Orion once it mm. went beyond on uh, near Earth, uh, so we run the Deep Space Network for NASA. Um, so we're the ones who are talking to Orion. Those beautiful pictures you saw coming back of the Earth and Moon, those came through our Deep Space Network. The, but the goal of Orion is that, content, is that um, you know, the presence that isn't just about flags and footsteps. It's about learning to really live on other worlds. And none of those robotic missions have done that. And really to have a sustained presence out in the solar system, the Moon is a great training ground yeah I, the, the blunt answer is artemis is putting people back on the moon right yeah. else is a, is a robot so there you go people yeah there you have it yeah, yeah. Well, that was a great answer and the great answer he thought he had you he thought he had you yeah he was coming at it he like, was coming I got her now. that was a great answer Sorry. <laughs> all right this is christopher Bax. he says howdy everybody my question is about the future of spacecraft propulsion are mm -hmm. there any promising new technologies and development that you think will revolutionize future space missions so fusion, we agreed, is pretty Wait. far off, at least Not as so an much, engineering yeah. solution. But, you know, but NASA has been involved in some stuff, right? Sure. I mean, you know, we're continuing to do more things like solar electric propulsion. Um, there actually is, we're testing some green propulsion technologies on one of our very small lunar robotic missions that we just launched called Lunar Flashlight that, you know, I think that's an interesting thing to think about, uh, especially with the number of launches that, that uh, we're doing as a, as a planet. Wait, is that, um, is that a solar more... sail? The, the... No, it's not. It's different oh. kind of uh, chemical propulsion. Okay. Uh -huh. and, which mm -hmm. is, I think, as much as I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Rocks. I study rocks. Did <laughs> I mention that? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Stationary rocks. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> no, but the point is, uh, NASA does presumably have an entire uh, uh, sub-industry within itself thinking about propulsion. You bet, you bet, right, absolutely. Course. We work a lot on solar electric propulsion there here. Mm -hmm, All right, mm -hmm. there you go, Christopher. Your answer is, we're working on it. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is Corey Allen says, hello, Dr. Leshen. Uh, this is Corey from Minneapolis. Um, if we parked a satellite with a high-powered laser in orbit around an icy moon like Europa or even okay. Enceladus, could the laser burn a hole into the surface in which a small probe could be dropped? Would this not be easier and less intrusive than drilling into the ice? Thank you all. Love the show. Uh, first of all, let me just say this. Corey, you would make a great Bond villain. <laughs> space laser. Giant space, space laser. laser. Giant yeah. space laser. At the laser, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Uh, so the interesting, so good one, Corey. Thank you. Very creative. And we, we love those kind of creative ideas at JPL and we like to think about them. Turns out getting through the ice at, at a place like Europa is really hard because it tends to want to close up on itself. Right. And so you need something that's going to kind of hold open the hole once you've made it, just like on earth, when they are drilling, they, they put casing inside the hole. Right. And, and, doing that down through lots of deep ice is hard. So a from space solution there, I don't think would work. I'd have to think about it a little bit more, but I love the creativity. Yeah, I'd like that, Lori, the way you said that, because thinking about it in real time, you can melt the top little bit, like let's say a few centimeters and there's a little puddle, right? But it wants to refreeze. Yeah. So, so you have to keep heating it to prevent that from refreezing while you melt the next few centimeters. Right. Right. 
And right. now that you've got that melted, you need the heat to keep that liquid while you melt the next few centimeters. So I don't know if it's just a single laser pointing down would accomplish this. Right. Because you're fighting against nature, which just wants to freeze the whole damn thing over. Right. And just, and once you get deep enough, the pressure, you know, it just wants to close up on itself. So right, right. It, so, we actually have some, some colleagues at Caltech working on this. It turns out to be a really challenging problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you need a perfectly vertical um, lightsaber. That's what you need. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right through there. A yeah. lightsaber. Just let it yeah. keep going down. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> take it, Messier. Says this. Hello, Lori, Neil, and our personal ha ha physicist. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, ha ha physicist. Right, yes, okay. the ha ha physicist. Uh, Tegan here from British Columbia. I was wondering since gravity affects light, how does the Earth's gravitational field not affect the way we see Earth looking from outside of our own gravitational field and vice versa from inside gravity when we're looking from another planet? So that sounds like a Neil question. Yeah, to me. that is. That's, I think Neil that's question. like an astrophysicist oh, yeah, yeah, question. I, 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 Earth, as big and as massive as it is, it it is vanishingly small in its effect on gravity. Gravity and its effect on the light in its vicinity to not have that matter at all. To either we looking out from Earth or people from outside Earth looking in. As we start getting more and more dense and massive, like towards a black hole, then it completely distorts the visual environment, not only looking out, but also looking in. But so, so yes, that happens, but you have to be way more- um, Massive. Massive yeah. than Earth is. So yeah, okay. don't worry about it. Yeah. Wow, great yeah, answer. Cool. And Good. Cool, oh, cool, cool, cool. Phew. All right. Thanks for thanks for jumping in on that one. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I, got I got your back. I got your back. I got your back, Lori. Okay. All right. Here's Stephen Smith. Stephen Smith. Man, we are we are moving along. This is the fastest lightning round we've ever had. Okay. Uh, no, Lori's Steven, badass. That's why I knew that. We knew that. Maybe, maybe you'll have me back. Smith. Yeah. Stephen Smith says this. Hey, y'all. It's Steve here from just outside Wusta. Oh. I guess that's Massachusetts. What's right? that? Wista is how Wista. they say it. Is that how you say it? <laughs> yeah. Wista. Uh, Wista. Wait, wait, wait. That's Lori's old stomping ground. It and is. That must I be lived it. there w for eight years. W Wonderful Wista. Uh, wicked cool. All right. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's wicked cool. Wicked. Yeah, very he says, uh, Dr. Lori, has there been any progress in creating an ion space engine for interplanetary? So, which is pretty cool but yeah, yeah very um, cool. I, I don't know about the engine side but we are thinking a lot about missions that go beyond the solar system i do think it's on the frontier i think you'll see in the coming year um you know more discussion about that and of course i have to use this opportunity to give a shout out to our interstellar voyagers voyager mm -hmm, <laughs> right the voyager mm -hmm. missions are on the edge of the solar system right now they're the farthest right human-made thing that's that has ever been sent anywhere and we still talk to them every single day they Ooh, launched i thought they 40, cut the, oh, i thought they, they that. launched 45 oh, years my. ago wow oh, they're oh, gonna be 50 in another four years sweet. or so that's so sweet and and they are still going they got that golden record on there neil mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. about it right and mm -hmm. and uh if if any uh aliens are out there you know spinning the disc uh they'll find out about us. So yeah, we yeah. interstellar travel, I think is, um, you know, interstellar exploration is definitely on the horizon. Okay, by the way, but the question actually asked interplanetary, but I think they meant interstellar. Interstellar. Oh, that is yes. how I interpreted yeah. it. Yeah, as did yes. I, as did yes. I. No, yeah, yeah, that's cool. right. Interplanetary is cool. And I just love yeah. the idea of the uh, aliens finding that disc and playing it and going, this is like, the worst damn album I have ever heard. <laughs> like I happen to have a record player right here. Yeah, so, so nice. No, no, wow. you got to go back to the to the Saturday Night Live skit because <laughs> on the on the albums like Mozart, Beethoven, Heartbeats, uh, Chuck Berry was on there. There's a it's a melange of human culture and Saturday Night Live did a skit back in the seventies. Back in the seventies, where the aliens found the ship and sent a message back to the White House. And the president reads it and says, Mr. President, what did the alien say? And it says, send more Chuck Berry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's right. Totally. <laughs> Chuck Berry actually deployed. came and played on the steps right outside my building here at JPL. Yes, uh, yes. In the it, 80s, you know? As a celebration of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's so cool. I yeah, know, right? Yeah, yeah. 
All right, uh, Chuck, maybe time for like one more. Here's one more. Okay. And it All comes right. from our friend Alejandro Reynoso. Okay. Wow. <laughs> good voice, Chuck. <laughs> he says, <laughs> I'm just easy, buddy. This is, the fact that he keeps writing back means he's not he, offended he's by not what offended you've done. He's not offended by what I do. So, But anyway, he's back a regular. To, back good. to. Yeah, he's Alejandro right Reynoso from Monterrey, Mexico. Okay. He says, hello. <laughs> or, <laughs> or should I say, hola. Okay, go on. <laughs> go. <laughs> My question is, what is the most important thing that you are working on that we do not know about? Oh, I love that question. What a great, great question. question. And okay. On. What a great question. Here, here it on. is. I, I have two. I'll be really, really fast. Because everybody knows about our Mars rovers and all the cool um, planetary stuff we do. But we also do amazing things in astrophysics. We are building the first major coronagraph, an instrument that's going to block the light of stars uh, so we can image right. planets around, around them that will launch on the next big space telescope called the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, named after a woman, woo. And, um, and the other thing you, we do a ton wait, of- Wait, wait, just to be clear, all of our knowledge of exoplanets comes from their <laughs> influence on the host star or because they blocked out right? the light. And so but we don't we actually want see them. We don't actually see them. So you're saying you're going to build a, 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 a telescope that is taking light away so that you're not, you can image the planet is not lost in the glare. Correct. It's oh, like the God. size of a grand piano, this thing. It's amazing. Right. So, and then the other big thing we do that I really want to mention is Earth science, eyes yeah. on Earth. We are driving the future technology that helps us measure and understand where our home planet is headed. And we care really deeply about that as well. And so we've got a lot of new missions coming up in Earth science, whether it's working on aerosols and their connection to asthma or looking at the radiation budget at the poles or understanding, you know, earthquakes and wow. biomass. And then we just launched, of course, SWAT to look at Earth's water. Wow. wow. Very cool. Excellent. So, Lord, okay, now tell us uh, what's classified. We want to hear that, too. Mm -hmm. I, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. So, no, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> We're just, just, our, just our fan base, that's all. We, we, can, we can all keep a secret. That <laughs> is the sweetest way I've ever heard anybody say, I'll have to kill you. <laughs> like your tone is like you know it was so inviting yeah, and warm. Yeah, yeah, it was so it was so loving. Yes, but yeah, it yeah, was. I, I'll kill you, dear. Yes, yes. he's okay. a you're a dangerous woman, Lori. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. no comment. <laughs> so, Lori, thanks for being on Star Talk. Oh my gosh! And we wanted to get you right when you started, and then I, I realized retrospectively how bad an idea that was because you're, you're just trying to get up and running. Yeah. And so catching up with you six months later in the new year, 2023, um, we look forward to all that you will bring to the Jet Propulsion Labs, maintaining and extending the legacy that is so storied for that institution. So uh, we're going to find Lori. It's a Laurie. thrill to be with you. Yeah, thanks. It's been a delight once again. And uh, Lori, we'll try to, can we have like a, a, a red phone hotline to your office for like, if something else happens in the future, you can like, as long as I can have a personal astrophysicist line where I can call yeah. you. <laughs> when I get, yeah. Two ways, my friend, two ways. No, it's just that JPL that. Does, does, we all know JPL does the coolest stuff, and we don't want to be too far from it. We, we do. Know, we know we're not because you're there. So, all right. Thanks. This has been Star Talk, Cosmic Queries Edition, all about JPL, past, present, and future, featuring Lori Lesh and its new director. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, as always, bidding you to keep looking up. <laughs>